Hello and welcome to the Thursday DC Today. Markets closed today to the downside, although they were pretty much flat for the whole day. They just gapped down at the open uh, once they kind of hit a low point near the beginning of market trading, uh, stayed there throughout the day. There was a little up and down stuff along the way, but for the most part, pretty flat range once you uh, priced in the downside of the opening which left the Dow down 340 points, um, left the uh, S&P, excuse me, down uh, 1.16%, the NASDAQ down 1.5%. Um, you, you have continued issues with some of the big cap and big tech names on the NASDAQ side. The Dow was interesting because you actually had some real big names, blue chip names, some kind of big value type dividend growth names that were up on the day. And then energy was up about 2%. It was the only positive performing sector. And energy had been down on the first couple of days of the new year. Uh, but energy was up 2% of the day. Um, and then you had the worst performing sector um, re being real estate down almost 3%. So the REITs are getting hit. You have, uh, you know, all the different normal cast of reasons around that. The factor that pushed futures down this morning and then um, stuck with market downside throughout the day was the ADP jobs report, which came out uh, 235,000 private sector jobs created in December. And there's about 150,000 expected. So God knows you can't have new jobs being created or let alone more than expected. And so the market had to sell off out of the fear of uh, what the Fed may have to do around those new jobs. So um, that's as much sarcasm uh, as I can muster. It, uh, but that's kind of, it's again, that, that same old dynamic that we saw throughout all of last year. So I uh, don't have much to add to it because the BOS date is coming tomorrow. Um, let's see, did I give you all the numbers yet? Um, the 10 year closed at 3.72%, basically flat today. Um, and uh, crude oil was up about one, one and a half percent, uh, back to $74 a barrel. And then I think as of the time I'm recording, they've now done nine votes in the House with no Speaker of the House secured, and they're getting ready to potentially do a 10th vote tonight. There was talk this morning when I was up quite early that there had been some progress made, um, but nothing had uh, surfaced there yet. And by progress, I mean within the Republican Party's internal disagreement towards getting some concessions made that would help get a vote necessary to confirm Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House. I cannot tell you what's going to happen, and nobody I'm talking to can tell you, um, you know, where, where this thing is going to go. So uh, that lingers. Um, and then the other piece today that... I put into my notes very early this morning. Uh, there is now officially no global debt trading at a negative yield. You um, have slowly seen that dissipating away over the last several years as bonds have sold off, which means yields going higher. And um, you, at one point, I believe the peak would have been around 2018 had nearly 17-ish trillion dollars trading at a negative yield in terms of global sovereign debt. And now as there's been enough rate normalization in developed and emerging markets, the um, even though we had gotten down to just a couple trillion in recent times, uh, officially the uh, chart that we look to where Bloomberg tracks out a lot of this stuff has no uh, sovereign indebtedness trading negative yield. So that's a sign of such a, a significant movement. I mean, I don't think we can take our eye off the ball of how preposterous things were previously, uh, but that pendulum having shifted the other way is both good to normalize some of these uh, sovereign debt scenarios, and then it's also a negative where there are countries that have now tightened to a point that there's risk of recession and things like that. But that's kind of the state of affairs. So yeah, the um, BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the real jobs report, that comes out tomorrow. There's a pretty decent history of the ADP and BLS data not aligning. Will the BLS data outperform ADP tomorrow? We'll see. Will it underperform expectations? We'll see. Will the market care? Or is the Fed already going to do what it's going to do anyways, which is kind of my view? Um, we shall see. I think all things being equal, the Fed would like to get some cover 
and have a bad jobs report and whatnot. But I think substantively they have a path they're going to go down regardless. So uh, that's tomorrow, BLS, 5.30 a.m. Pacific. And then uh, the other event tomorrow is the Dividend Cafe coming to you with both a, a lengthy video, uh, the same audio of the video on podcast, but then the 27-page white paper will be available to you as a printable PDF with charts and all the things to edify your weekend about 2022 and 2023 in the economy and the market. Thanks for listening to the DC Today and watching. And uh, we uh, take your questions. Please feel free to send any you like, especially after the white paper comes out. Um, and I will be answering them next week. Questions at thebonsongroup.com. Thanks for listening to DC Today. <music>